All right, whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. So when I, when I go to the library, I see books. I also see tables. I also see students. And I also see earbuds. And also, um, also tables with pencils and books and stuff. And all together, that, that gives a picture of a student doing their homework with music. <laughs> and that's, that's perfectly understandable. It is good to do homework while doing music. But it's been heard that it distracts you and such, and it really hinders you. But ideally, music that is moderate, low, or absent in music better achieves concentration. And what I mean by that is, um, it means that even though, even though you're listening to music, you can still maintain your concentration in doing um, any type of homework. Well, not any type of homework, there's specific kinds, but anyway. But first, firstly, um, doing homework, doing homework with music is good because um, it, it reels you in, music reels you in, because um, um, it makes you feel good. It just, um, and if you feel all right, you can just, you, you, it really is, And if you if you feel good, you can actually do it because um, if you if you don't feel like it, you won't you won't really want to do it. And also, since you're reeled in, it 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 makes you it makes you keep doing it. You can you can keep doing it and continue. But um, according to um, um, Professor Williams um for Thomas for Thomson's um observations, this is true, and um. Also, he did. It, he did. It, um, he um, claims that um, it's better to do homework listening to listening to classical music. And since that's true, he can do homework for other types of music. Because with classical music, it it has no lyrics. And with um, other types of music, like jazz, and house, um, other types of music like that. You can do homework with it too and still um, be able to concentrate. And with that said, um, it um, hierarchy needs to be established. So um, there's the um, like for music. There's um, there's um, the value value of music and the activity of your brain waves. So basically. In order to achieve full concentration, the activity of your brain waves must be higher, while everything else is lower. So, with the second reason, it uh, you gotta make sure that there's not enough, that there's not too many lyrics, because um, because um, lyrics, because of too many lyrics, they will distract you, because um, too many words. There's too many words, and with those words, you'll just you'll just think of those words. You'll you'll um, overwhelm yourself. And if that's true, the um, hierarchy you know, in terms of hierarchy, the lyrics and music will um, dominate, so you won't be able to concentrate that well. And um, as evidence, um, Emily M. Harbour's um, experience. She does. She um she wrote a blog. She wrote a blog on um about music, and um it turns out that she she actually does fine because um she wrote she wrote the blog on listening to this one song called um called um Circle Down by um Avery. Actually, a pretty catchy song. I I, I, I kind of like it, and um she she did find it on her blog. I thought I thought it was um well well, well understood. Um, grandma was okay. It was all good. And so, um, basically, music, 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 it, 
it needs to it, it needs to have moderate lyrics, low or either absent, in the achieving full concentration. But um, specifically, it's be, it's better to just um have um, no lyrics with um, concentration because the less lyrics, the better you can understand. Well, you're done. Yes. All right. You can go sit down. I'll have comments for you in a minute. All right, Zion, here's how uh, it goes. Uh, you've described the library, you go through that whole process, you've taken a long time to getting to the point that you've got. I appreciate the idea of making it an attention device that's interesting, that pulls us in a little bit, but you gotta get to that claim a little bit quicker, and it has to be clearer, because I kind of, as soon as you started talking about it, I remembered what your subject was, and I'm listening for what it is you're going to say is your proposition, and I heard something that I would say, yeah, that's probably the proposition, but I don't know if anybody else heard it and picked it out. So you don't be shy about identifying the proposition. There is no preview of what the structure is going to be. So I'm going to have to depend on the internal signposting, which is not bad, but you want to lay it out for audiences. People are, you know, people are not good listeners. Okay. All right. The truth of the matter is that uh, we all think that we're good listeners, but we're not. And you got to help uh, audiences more by giving them a, a, a layout, giving them a roadmap for the argument. Uh, the controversy on this is not particularly clear. I, I suppose that some people feel this way and some people feel a different way. I'm not exactly sure why this is an argument that requires a substantial amount of discussion. It might be a conversation that I have with somebody while I'm riding in the elevator, although if I was with Wyatt, it would be a long conversation, apparently. <laughs> um, now, the body of the speech is organized. You do have two main points that you're talking about. Um, the first one talks about how music reels you in, and uh, there's no evidence on this. This is all your assertion. You do have one piece of evidence that refers to research by William Ford Thompson uh, that talked about apparently classical music, uh, but there's no statistic here about how it improves it. There's not a direct quote here. There's a vague reference to this source. That's problematic. You want uh, a direct quote. If this is an authority who said that listening to music improves people's ability to retain information, learn, understand, and pass tests in the future, then you should be quoting that person directly. I don't get any information like that. It just, you know, oh, it's good. It, you know, it, music's good for you. That's kind of the general attitude I have. And then the other thing is that uh, you equivocate classical music with music that doesn't have any lyrics, and that's as close as you come to proving this notion that it's the lyrics that make the difference. I'm not exactly sure that that's the case. A lot of the research that I've heard over the years suggests that it is the structure of classical music that makes it uh, useful for people to study by, not necessarily the absence of lyrics. I, you know, I'm not presenting any evidence here. I'm not refuting that. I'm just saying that's something that I've heard, and what you have given me doesn't really tell me that, you just make this assumption that that's the case. And then there's this hierarchy thing that you're talking about, about how people process music, and I don't know exactly what that means. I don't know how you are suggesting that listening to music is going to improve our ability to function as long as the uh, value of the homework is greater than the uh, value of the music, or the activity of the brain is higher than uh, whatever value there is of the music. I don't know how that gets measured. I don't know why you think that's true. I don't know who said that, if that's your uh, conclusion or some authority that you cited, because there's not any source citation on that. And then that's the whole second point of your argument that you don't want to have any lyrics or too many lyrics. You've got a blog post uh, from somebody 
who apparently wrote their blog while they were listening to music, and I'm glad that they were able to multitask, but I'm not exactly sure that I would say that that's a strong uh, piece of information to prove the inference that you're making. You do have an example, that's helpful, but I think you need a lot more information on that. Uh, at the end, you do kind of remind us what the claim is, but you want to be a little bit more assertive about it. Your presentation is, I know you're trying to speak to us and be direct to us, but uh, I think you have to have a little bit more force and energy behind the presentation. And if that requires that you have to look at your outline a bit, maybe that would be a better thing than uh, just trying to struggle to remember what it is you're going to say. All right. Thank you for being our first speaker.